This tutorial is to show you how to set up the dip trace schematic program to create your schematic diagram for your projects in my class. So to start off with, you'll see all these different menus at the top and they have all these different parts. This isn't very useful for us because there are so many of them. So what I've done is created our own custom library. So if you go to library, you go library setup. From library setup, you click over here in the library bar and browse. We go to the network drive, K drive assignments. You scroll down and you find the electronics lab. You hit, you double click it, and then you find dip trace. Then you click OK. What you'll find now is when I close this off, that you have the three libraries that I've specifically made for this class. So there's one on Arduino, there's one for the basic school parts, and there's one for very special parts that are usually used only for senior classes. I can immediately update these and it will take effect across the entire classroom. So if there's a special part that needs to be added, there's no work done other than the next time you start it up, it shows up here. So I've now established the libraries that I need. The rest is fairly straightforward. I'm going to click on the school one and I'm going to develop right now a basic schematic for a DC power supply. I'm going to start with four diodes, so I'm going to click diode. I'm just going to click. Now what I'm going to do is before I click down, you can see how it moves all over the place. I'm going to hit F11, turn, turn the grid on, and then it'll snap in place. So, put four diodes in. If I want them to face the other way, I simply turn them around with a space bar. I'll put space bar to go this way, and I'll scroll down a bit, and space bar to turn it that way. Okay, there's my four diodes. Next, I'll go to capacitors, and what I've done here is there's different values, and I create the capacitor, and you can see down here the actual pattern that it creates. Basically, the bigger the voltage, the bigger the capacitor. So, because this project only requires smaller capacitors, I'll take this 1000 UF 25 volt one, I hit spacebar to rotate it around, and I'm going to put it there. Next, I'm going to grab an LM317, or sorry, an LM7805. Those are under special. So, I'll click the special, I'll come down here, there's 7805. You can see what the pads look like down here, and I will now put this over there. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for a second. Now I'm going to join the wires. So to start off with, when you click, you can see that it goes red. That means I'm going to be joining to it. I'm going to click with my left mouse button, and I'm going to come down to the one that it's going to match with. I'm going to click there. They now join. Now, you can actually see down here, the red and this don't join. If I move this around, oh, they are joined. Okay, so they are joined. Okay, so next. I'm going to connect this one here to the one down below, and they connect up. Now I'm going to connect these ones to this capacitor and to the 705, and I'm going to click on here, and you can see the black dot shows up, that means there is a connection, and I'm going to connect these ones here to ground, and I'm going to click this one, and I'm going to go down to ground on these ones. Now that's really messy and it's hard to see. So what you tend to do is move things around so it's really easy to see. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to go up like this, a bit higher, and I'll take this one here, and I'll go up higher. I'm going to put them in line, basically, and you'll watch what happens now. So that's nice, a bit, little bit cleaner. When it comes to here, I'm going to put this one down lower, this one down lower, and now it's a lot easier to see. So all I'm doing basically to move them is dragging, highlight on top, left mouse button, and dragging them around. So there's the basics of this side. Now on this side, I'm going to connect these two together, and I connect these two together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the special school, or the school one, and I'm going to scroll down, and because this will be an AC source coming in, I'm going to scroll all the way down, and I'm going to find, as soon as I can, AC source, put that there, and I'll connect the AC source to here, and I'll connect the AC source to there. So, that's it so far. I'm going to create the rest of the schematic over here now. I'll scroll back to the top. It consists of a 0.1 UF capacitor, so I'm just going to space bar around, add that. There are four resistors. Now, there's quarter watt resistors, which are the small ones in class, half watt resistors, which are the bigger ones in class. I'm going to use the half watts only because there's more space between them. So we'll grab them, space bar to rotate it. I'm going to put one, two, three, four. Right mouse click. And the last thing is, I'm going to go back to special. And the last part in this whole project 
is a female USB. And I'm going to put that right over here. Okay, now it's just a matter of joining everything up. These go together. These go together. These here go together. Go together. Cross. And again, I'm just left mouse clicking and dragging my mouse. Okay. I'm going to make, keep this nice and tidy, so I'm going to move this. Maybe move these up one. And I'm going to put this up. Makes it nice and tidy. This guy. So I'm just going to grab. If I if I mess up, I can hit place wire up top, and I can just come down, join that one, and then I'll join that one. Okay. Now finally, the USB. The five volts goes to five volts. And I'm just going to clean this up a bit, move it higher, and then the ground goes to ground. And again, I'm going to move this down just so it's a little cleaner. I'm going to move it like this. Move this one up a bit higher so it looks a little cleaner. And then the last thing is these two in the middle go, this guy goes to the far side. Oops. And sometimes it doesn't want to go where you want it to go. We'll clean that up after. This guy goes to this one. That one worked pretty good. So this I'll just clean up. And I'll put it down in place. So there's my basics. Now, before I convert it over to PCB, what I want to do is make sure I label everything so that I know the parts when it goes into the circuit board creator program. It makes it a lot easier when you're building later. So what I can do is I can right mouse click on these and I can go down to properties and I can go to value and here I can put that this is a 150k resistor. Now if I hit OK, it shows up. That's good. Okay, so I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to put 100k and then I'll put these ones are 47k's and this other one's a 47k as well. Okay, so those are my basic things. Diodes I don't need to label because we know what a diode is. We're looking just for the values. Now if this these didn't show up, what I can do is I can go up to view, part marking, main, and if I wanted no markings at all for the entire thing, I hit none and everything disappears. But since I want it, I go back to view, <coughs> part markings, main, and value. And there they all go. So that's my com completed schematic. That will be converted to a circuit board soon. What I'm going to do is save it. So I'll just go File, Save As. You go to your L drive. And then mine's Classen. And I'm just going to go into, I don't know, my documents. I'll just create it here. Oh, there's one called DipTrace already. And I'm just going to save it as test as a class demo. And there we go. So that is all it is to creating a schematic diagram for the most part in this program. And the next thing that you would do is you would go to file and convert to PCB. And that will be my next tutorial.